Well, thank you so much uh, for that great introduction, Sophia. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, it's uh, truly an honor and pleasure to be here with you today and in the presence of so many uh, labor activists, uh, some of whom uh, learned a lot, and then the rest of you. It's, it's great to meet you all, and uh, I look forward to uh, learning uh, from you and having a great discussion uh, today about uh, the presentation on. Uh, um, as Sophia said, uh, the uh, entire presentation will take about 45 minutes. If, if I just take a minute to uh, describe the outline of the presentations, I'll be speaking about 15 minutes or so. Hopefully I'll keep it within 15 minutes. Um, I'll be talking about the, uh, the topic of uh, my discussion is the neoliberal theocracy, the neoliberalization of the capitalist state of uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran. And, uh, in my discussion, I'll be uh, mainly speaking about the neoliberal reforms that has taken place uh, in the past few decades in Iran, but particularly uh, after uh, the election, the so-called election of President uh, Rouhani. Um, I'll also be talking about the implications of this neoliberal reforms and the austerity measures on Iranian workers um, in, in details. Um, talking about, for instance, some of the free zones uh, that have been established uh, in the past few years, um, a concept uh, as uh, what is called uh, white checks and white blank contracts, uh, which are um, which have basically shifted the power of uh, the the power relation between laborers and employers in Iran, uh, and have substantially and significantly increased the power of employers in Iran. Um, so that's sort of the gist of my presentation. Afterwards, my colleague uh, Mohammed um, will be uh, speaking about uh, the the fight back, the fight back on the side of the labor movements. Uh, so the struggles that. The Iranian labor movement, which, is, uh, which has quite a rich history uh, in Iran, um, we'll be talking about that. We'll be talking about the state oppression um, against the struggles and the protests and the strikes that are happening in Iran. And uh, third, uh, Ali Farid, uh, my great colleague here, will be speaking about uh, the international alliance and support of workers in Iran. So let me get started, and, and please feel, feel free to write down any questions you have. I'll be more than happy to take any questions. You have regarding my presentations, and uh, I believe my colleagues will do the same. Um, so I'll be happy to answer any of those questions. Uh, my name is Bezat. I'm uh, a member of uh, QP3903, which represents graduate students, teaching assistants, and research assistant at York University. Uh, you may know us by the successful strike that we uh, uh, posted uh, last year, um, where we stood uh, for. Uh, our rights and the right of all students, uh, uh, fundamental human rights to education um, and, and accessible and affordable uh, education. I'm also a member of the International Alliance in support of workers in Iran, uh, which you'll hear about um, if you haven't already heard from our third speakers. So just a little uh, bit of information about Iran. Iran is obviously located in the Middle East. Uh, it is the second largest country, uh, country in the Middle East, and it also has the second largest economy in the Middle East um, after uh, Saudi Arabia. Um, it has a great population of uh, approximately 80 million people, uh, which is a, makes it all the more important uh, for our discussions. Um, it has a very young population. Um, uh, about 70% of the uh, population is uh, as you can see on the, on the screen, between 15 and 65 years old. Um, the median age is only 27 years old, so we're talking about a great young population. Um, and the system of government is a capitalist state. It's a theor uh, theocratic republic, uh, which basically means, according to the Iranian constitution, and I'll be referring to the slides uh, as we go along, all civil, pain, uh, penal, financial, economic, administrative, cultural, military, political, and other laws uh, and regulations must be based on economic <coughs> criteria, which obviously makes it not only a capitalist state, but I will be explaining how it's a capitalist state, but also a theocratical uh, state. Some general information about Iran and why is it important to study it. Um, it is located in the Middle East, which uh, it, basically is the borderline between Asia, Europe, and um, Africa, which makes it all the more important because historically, um, for the labor movement, um, any sort of struggles and protests and revolutions in Iran has had a profound impact in the entire region. So whether it be uh, the recent uh, movements in uh, the Arab Spring, which some believed uh, sparked uh, perhaps in Iran, 
uh, or whether it be the 1979 revolution, which had the same impact in, in terms of um, uh, its significance around the world. So it's important for us to uh, not only understand it, but also understand the dynamics of the labor, uh, uh, the labor movement in Iran and why it's important to express our solidarity and uh, to, to study it and, and to support it. Okay, so Iran's political and economic system, the Islamic Republic of Iran is a brutal anti-worker capitalist state. In recent years it has adopted neoliberal uh, uh, austerity measures uh, which are dictated by, obviously by the uh, Western uh, capitalist countries. Uh, Iran's social policies is based on state control of the political system, repression of individuals and collective freedoms, um, as well as um, com uh, denying the fundamental human rights of uh, yeah, not only workers, but also women, children, and, um, and other uh, segments of the population. Uh, as I said, I will be talking about uh, sort of more recent, um, I, I try to avoid sort of the, the historical um, description of what has happened in Iran. I uh, will take it for granted that most of you know. Uh, the so-called election of President uh, Rouhani was the result of the financial uh, struggles and stagnation that um, was taking place in Iran, obviously due to some of the uh, strict and severe economic uh, sanctions that were, that were posed to Iran. Rouhani's administration came to power on the promise of uh, basically removing the sanctions based on the negotiations and sort of the, the, the so-called removing the sanctions in order to bring economic <coughs> prosperity to Iran. Um, Rouhani actually uh, got elected, although we don't really recognize the election as being uh, democratic, fair, or by any, any measure, by uh, the least standards uh, that we can consider. But Rouhani actually became um, the agent of neoliberal reforms in Iran. Now, that's not to say that uh, neoliberal reforms weren't taking place under the previous uh, regime, under Ahmadinejad's or under Rafsanjani's, actually under uh, President Rafsanjani's, which who was in power um, uh, in, in the 1980s, the neoliberal reforms had already started taking place. So massive privatizations, uh, removing, uh, you know, sort of taking the country, taking this, the government outside of the sort of the, the economic uh, uh, relations and, and uh, again, privatizations and slashing wages, removing labor regulations, which I'll be referring to um, in the coming slides has already taken place. But uh, more severely, it took place, the neoliberal reforms uh, took place under uh, President Rouhani. Before I talk about how uh, the, the sort of um, implications of neoliberal reforms in Iran and how uh, neoliberalism reforms have taken place in Iran, uh, I'll be talking about sort of briefly uh, about what neoliberalism is and what I, what I believe it to be. Um, neoliberalism is the current social and economic and political ideology of global capitalism that operates on the basis of uh, free market uh, philosophy and trickle-down economics. And it has multiple pillars and multiple elements, but uh, the most important one that I thought for this discussion was the rule of the market, basically inserting market philosophy, in, inserting uh, market ideology, uh, the idea that markets know best and um, that the state, has, the state and the public sector uh, should not uh, intervene in the matters of the economy, and sort of is, goes to the heart of neoliberal politics. So um, that, that is sort of the, the gist of what the role of the market in, in deciding public policies, matters of uh, investments, uh, and so on. Um, cutting public expenditure for social services, so whether it be investment in sort of uh, so-called soft investments, uh, cutting down uh, cost of education, healthcare, housing, um, or whether it be like sort of more hard investments in terms of removing uh, investment in infrastructures, roads, bridges, uh, water supply, uh, is also part of the new role ideology. Uh, deregulations of the market, so removing all um, sort of tariffs, making sure that capital moves around as easily as possible, but on the other hand, labor does not have the same power, uh, making sure that uh, all lab labor regulations are removed so uh, the capitalist class uh, can uh, do what it wants, uh, really as freely as possible. Um, 
and getting rid of all safety laws, for example, um, that's also part of the uh, new world agenda. Privatization, so all state-owned enterprises and factories and public services uh, are supposed to be privately uh, invested in and privately owned and operated. That's part of neoliberalism as well. And eliminating the concept of the public good or community. So uh, very famously, Margaret uh, Tarcher said that there's no longer a society, there's only individuals. And there's no such thing as public good. There's only individuals' freedoms and individual rights that has to be protected. Now, arguably, they cannot even protect individual rights, but that is the argument. And on, on, on the same uh, you know, concept, uh, making sure that individuals are responsibilized for their own being. So uh, the individuals are constantly told that uh, your state and your government and your community has, uh, has no obligation to you. You're responsible for yourself and your family, and you have to take care of yourself and your family. So that's the concept of the organization. So the election of, uh, and now I'll, I'll be talking about how that concept, the concept of neoliberalism, has taken place in Iran. Because neoliberalism takes different shapes and forms, uh, and it has different contingencies, and wherever it goes, it operates within uh, certain um, elements. If someone t could tell me where I'm within time, but that's still be quicker than Okay, so he um, and his economic team basically crafted a platform titled The Proposed Package to Turn Stagnation to expansion, uh, which was in line with the ideological underpinnings of neoliberalism and uh, the solution. So it's basically his solutions to poverty, recession, unemployment, and all the social ills that we currently have in Iran have been basically to pave the way for international investments and uh, making sure that all labor regulations are removed, all obstacles in the way of international capital are removed uh, in order for employers to supposedly job creators to create as many jobs as they can. Uh, the proposed reforms call for withdrawal of the state uh, from intervening in the economy altogether, controlling governmental investment in both soft and physical problems, as I mentioned earlier. Um, not surprising at all that uh, President Rouhani's uh, uh, proposed reforms uh, were going to take that format in his book, uh, Security and Economic System in Iran. <coughs> he discussed Iran's very oppressive, quoting, very oppressive labor laws um, and against job creation. Now, we would agree that the Iranian labor laws are very oppressive. However, he meant that the labor laws were oppressive against the employers, against the so-called job creators. We believe that the uh, labor laws are oppressive against the laborers themselves. He called for slashing the minimum wage, and that's something that my colleague will be explaining in a few minutes. Um, restrictions on laying off workers. This was huge, um, as I'll be referring to it in, in the next slide. Paving the way for the owners of capital, as he put it, to have the freedom to invest and bring prosperity to Iran. Uh, more shamelessly, he stated, and I'm quoting, one of the main challenges that employers and our factories face is the existence of labor unions. Workers should be more playing towards the demands of job creators. So you can sort of really um, summarize his entire philosophy, and uh, you can see the impacts of neoliberal politics uh, in his way of thinking, in his way of governing, and really in that sentence, believing that the unions are to be blamed for um, the economic uh, recessions and depression. So what were uh, necessarily the agenda, and he also in one of his speeches uh, that I was reading, he claimed that the state must stay out of the economic uh, activities and place those activities at disposal of the private sector. Um, you wouldn't believe, but uh, President Reagan and Margaret Thatcher in both the United States and England in the 1970s were basically arguing the same thing. They're saying that the government that governs the least is the best form of government, and the government and uh, the only way for the government to help the economy is to really stay out of it. So um, would not be uh, surprising that Rouhani also took the same thing, uh, same uh, approach to uh, governing. He's actually a graduate of uh, Glasgow University in Scotland. So what were the specific neoliberal reforms that took place in Iran? I know I'm running out of time, so I have two minutes. I'll be pretty quick for the rest of the things. The expansion of uh, free zones, this is something really important. This free zones. Um, are basically economic free zones. They're geographical areas where uh, uh, any regulations, you know, more important labor regulations, are completely removed. 
So in Iran, basically, in this area, employers can decide exactly what type of work they'll, they'll make available, at what conditions and what terms, and how they would hire, how much they would pay someone, obviously, you know, benefits, and, and they'll get to be the, the determining uh, you know, agent in, in terms of how employment uh, uh, takes place. So the right to organize, obviously, the right to unionize, the right to peaceful assembly, and all the fundamental human rights that we take for granted um, uh, here in the Western world, even in some parts of Iran, that is taken uh, away altogether. And these are uh, just a map of where all these uh, so-called free zones take place. Uh, just compile the map of this. Uh, blue is special economic zones and free trade industrial zones. And another specific new law reforms is what is called the continuation of white contracts. You wouldn't believe it. So this basically what white contracts mean is basically a piece of paper. It's called a contract. And the workers are supposed to sign at the bottom of that uh, contract. And my time is out, but I'll be one more minute. Mm -hmm. uh, the contracts are basically signed by workers and the employers will uh, decide what the terms and conditions of employment is after the uh, you know, employment has started. So literally, the workers are without any rights, without any rights to, you know, negotiating their wages, without sort of discussing, you know, minimum wage, and sort of benefits, anything of that sort. On top of that, they're also, uh, the workers are also mandated to uh, sign white checks. White checks are basically, uh, again, signed by the workers in case they have any demands from the employers that threaten that that white check would be taken from the bank and would be cashed at the amount that the employers will decide. So, and that way it's just a method of threatening workers to not have any demands. I will uh, finish my presentation by uh, simply really, that one slide is really getting rid of all labor protections. Part of, again, the neoliberal uh, agenda is really getting um, rid of all the uh, rights that the Iranian uh, labor history has struggled for, for decades. Um, just two instances, though, and I'll finish my presentation with this, is uh, in 2000, and this is before the Rouhani um, got um, selected, or elected as they would call it, uh, the Iranian parliament exempted uh, workshops employing five or less uh, workers from any labor regulations. That, uh, that meant three million workers did not uh, have any um, you know, rights, according to uh, the parliament. In January 2003, it got even worse because 10 million, uh, any, any workshop uh, hiring less than 10 workers, which is a huge number of uh, uh, workshops in Iran. As you can see, the numbers, 402,000 uh, out of the 450,000 workshops at the time uh, were not uh, covered by that legislation. Obviously, that overwhelmingly impacted uh, women workers. So just uh, a very short presentation. Um, Thank you for listening. Uh, I hope in the little time that I had, I could give you the most information that I could. I really appreciate it, and if you have any questions, I'll be one time. Thank you very much. I'm honored to be present here, Brother Mohammed Kazemi, and I will be flashing the time as you go.